But first, the story everybody's talking about and will be talking about on Wednesday. At 11 a.m. Chicago time, the basketball world will live by a different time. Michael Jordan, a month away from the age of 36, will retire from the NBA for the second time, and we'll find out if this is the final time. Without argument, the game's greatest player goes out on top. Five MVP awards, six NBA championships, and a Q rating higher than his career scoring average. The man who coached Michael and was possibly maybe the one guy who could have brought Jordan back had he come back to coach in Chicago is Phil Jackson. He was in Southern California today, and Jim Rome questioned the ex-Bulls coach about Jordan's exit. When you found out about Michael Jordan's decision, your reaction wasn't one of sadness, acceptance, finality, what? You know, I have, I'm not going to talk about my reaction because it hasn't happened yet. He could change his mind tonight. And until it happens, I just felt like I, I better not talk. That's giving respect back to Michael about what his decision is and giving the full impact of the decision to him. But all along, Michael has basically let everybody through hints know that this is more likely the event that'll happen. So if you decided to come back, would that have impacted his decision? Uh, I didn't make that decision because Michael didn't ask me to do it. But again, Knowing the respect that goes between the two of us, I don't think Michael ever would have asked me to come out of retirement to coach a team because he didn't want to go into retirement. We both, and all the way through this, team has been very straight with each other. And at the end of last season, in our final farewell meeting that we had together as a team in Michael's restaurant, um, the final note was that the bonds that we've created through these years of winning, we will always hold as a special place and we release each other at this time to do what they have to do in their lives whether it's Michael retire, Scotty move on to a new team, uh, Phil Jackson retired, Steve Kerr go somewhere else, Luke Longley. If we split up, there's no splitting up the bonds but we may split up physically. See that's the thing and I posed the question because Michael said that when his father passed on you were very very important to him, that you took over almost a fatherly role for him, that you posed questions to him that his father would ask, not questions that would have any impact on your career or the Bulls, but that you cared about him as a person almost like a son. He treats you like a father figure. Well that's nice of him to say that and I, I hope that that's a compliment, but I'm not his father and I am not either his mentor like Dean Smith might have been, but I am a person that um, feels like that I've kind of been able to guide or protect or enhance, embellish Michael's abilities. In the same time, he's given me a great amount of credit for what has happened. And what I did say in those meetings that we had in his first retirement is, think of yourself as a talent that God's given us, not just yourself, and that you're taking an artist away from the potential of the visibility of all these fans and that art like uh, Barishnikov or whomever has given us in this entertainment value is irreplaceable and basketball will be diminished if he does retire. Last thought with respect to your situation, you're a man of your word, you said you would not come back. Jerry Reinsdorf called as recently as last week. Obviously Phil Jackson does not have his price as most men would. You did not come back. So why could you not come back? Why could we not take one more run, another ring, MJ, why can't we keep this thing going? Well, the fun we've had is very enticing, and, and believe me, there, there's always a temptation to do that. But enough is enough, and I have some things I want to do that I haven't done yet, and one of them is, uh, you know, see what this next go-round brings, see what life without basketball brings, see what it's like to take a winter vacation, and see what happens when Bill Bradley gets an opportunity to run for president. Wow, Phil and Bill, that's the ticket. <laughs> You'll hear that entire conversation with the man who coached Michael on Wednesday's Last Word with Jim Rome at 12.30 a.m. That's right after Fox Sports News primetime and a special presentation on Michael Jordan. The man who was Michael's longtime running mate in Chicago, Scotty Pippen, had this reaction to Jordan's retirement. I think that the timing for it is, is right, you know, right now that, uh, you know, he's on top of his career and, you know, the, the season is pretty much cut in half. It's kind of hard, you know, to be able to get yourself ready to play right now. Are you sad? No, I'm not sad. Not at all. You know, I'm very happy for him. I'm happy for what he's been able to accomplish in his career and you know, I'm happy to see that he's able to go out on top. Pippen, by the way, a free agent and didn't like, uh, sound much like a player planning on staying in Chicago. By the way, Kevin, Nike stock dropped 5% today. Wow, the shock waves from MJ's retirement indeed being felt all over the world, but the place being hit hardest, 
the epicenter, Chicago. John Kelly joins us from downtown Chicago, where he has indeed caught up with Michael Jordan. John? That's right, Kevin. Michael Jordan still inside a local restaurant behind me, meeting with a, a tight group of friends tonight. They first were over at his office downtown here, then they slid over here for a little bit of chow, playing some cards, reminiscing, just laughing, having a good time. Scotty Pippen, Ron Harper, Dickie Simpkins, along with his agent David Falk, who just about 30 minutes ago slipped outside, and we caught up with David, and we asked him how excited Michael is about tomorrow's decision. I think Michael's always been a great decision maker. Whatever decision he makes will be a, the right decision for him. Sound like it was important tonight to get the guys together as close teammates to kind of just talk things over. Is that what's going on? No, just having fun tonight. He's real relieved and real excited. And, uh, you know, he's, he's ready to just go ahead and make his uh, press conference and his announcement tomorrow and so he can go on to his next trip. So, he, you know, he's real excited about it. And, uh, you know, I'm sure he's looking forward to going to play golf when it's all over with. <laughs> Well, no golf tonight. Obviously, you can see that by the weather. It's too dark and way too cold. Playing a lot of cards tonight. Michael Jordan, a little bit of a gambler, likes to do it in his free time. And Ron Harper, he's been in and out of here. Left a little while ago, just slid back in, had a big stogie in his hand, ready to get back to the action. So uh, these guys just living up before Michael Jordan says hasta la vista to the NBA. That's all from Chicago. Send it back to the Fox Network Center. Kevin? Thanks a lot, John. A sweet lid, and um, you and Dickie both having on the tasty hats tonight. Anyway, good you, stuff, brother. man. Good stuff. Anyway, while we await tomorrow's news conference, players across the NBA have begun to reflect and say thanks to the guy I like to call the player president. I didn't want to play this game until I saw Michael Jordan play it. You know, he made me want to be an NBA basketball player. And, you know, just to tell him, you know, thanks for everything he brought to the game and open the door up for the rest of the players. You know, you're losing one of the greatest players to ever play the game. So, uh, you know, it's a sad day for the game of basketball. But, uh... You know, I wish him the best for the rest of his life. I thought Jesus never will retire, you know. <laughs> I thought Jesus worked seven days a week or six days. He rest on Sunday, didn't he? Well, Michael Jordan played on Sunday. Michael is uh, taking his game to a level most players can't get to. And, uh, you know, there have been a lot of great players, but he's combined it the best of anybody that I've seen. I, I mean, you know, he's, he's done it all. The league took another hit. I mean, we're, uh, you're talking about the greatest player to ever play the game. You're talking about a true champion. The best advice he gave me uh, was uh, the year after we, we beat them and they came back and they swept us and they won the whole thing. He said uh, something like, before you succeed, you must learn to fail. I've been uh, working all these years to try to beat him, <laughs> be a part of a team to beat him and we never accomplished it. You know, when I was in Charlotte and I was here, so, uh, no, I won't miss it. <laughs> We're joined by our NBA analyst, Marcus Johnson. Marcus, we heard from Phil just a moment ago say, hey, there was respect between the two, or I wouldn't come back and then expect him to come back. But, but uh, is speculation on your part. Do you think the lockout or if Phil had come back, if things were different, if this season was any different, that Michael would still be playing? Yeah, I really believe so. I believe that if the lockout hadn't have dragged on until January when he finally got this thing settled, that there's a good chance that Michael might have come on and played maybe this year, maybe a year after that to go through the farewell tour. I just thought he didn't want any part of this shortened season, three games and three nights, four games a week. He'll be 36 years old in February. If Phil would have been back, everything set in place, I think Michael may have decided to play at least one more year, possibly two. Let's look ahead, Marcus, now, and you look at Scottie Pippen's situation. Perhaps he could take over and take over the throne for Michael in Chicago, but then again, maybe he won't be in Chicago. Yeah, I, I kind of believe he will be in Chicago. He, he talks about trying to get to a team where people have said, well, but Scottie wants to get to a team that's going to win the championship. Well, he's got six rings already. I think right now, at 33 years old, at this point in Scottie Pippen's career, he's looking for financial security. He's been underpaid for so many years. He's going to go to the best team who can offer him the best deal, the most money. Chicago is in a position right now with the way the deal is structured to offer Scottie Pippen $14 million or so for over three or four years. I think he's going to take a good, long, hard look at that and think about his financial security as opposed to getting another ring. <laughs> hey, and real quick, Marcus, is he ready to take over this time? Last time he wasn't he was really. Not, yeah. Well, I, I think he's still Scottie. I think that's the difference between the greatest player that ever played and being a great player. Scottie's a great player. Michael's the greatest that ever played. Scottie will always be that guy who will give you 21 points, 8 or 9 rebounds, but he'll never be Michael Jordan. He realizes that now. All right. Thanks a lot, Marcus. We'll see you a little bit later with a very special Michael Jordan Fox Go.
All right, all we need now is for Michael to make it official. That will happen tomorrow when Jordan speaks to us all from the United Center. People will be gathering around the TV set to hear what he has to say about his retirement. And you'll be able to see it right here on Fox Sports News. We'll have wall-to-wall -wall coverage on Wednesday. We'll carry the news conference live on the network at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. That's 11 in Chicago. Wherever you are, you'll be able to see it. Marcus Johnson will join myself and a pack of reporters from Michael's moment. It'll be live, and then we'll be talking with Jerry Reinsdorf and Charles Barkley, among others. Then later in the day, you'll be able to see a half-hour special, Michael Jordan, The Greatest, hosted by Keith Olbermann. That's at 5.30 Eastern, and then again at midnight. Plenty more Jordan coverage to come in this hour. A little bit later, we'll get reaction from people outside the NBA on Michael's retirement. Also, a look back at uh, Michael Jordan before he became the superstar that we know he is today. Kevin?